Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashner, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Hi there. Welcome to the show, beautiful people. This is Debbie Dashinger, and today I am speaking with Tony Ghazi, who began having paranormal experiences when he was young with many awakenings, leading him to learn his galactic lineage to channel the praying mantis and other beings. Tony also created the first ever mantis crystal skulls. Dare to Dream has won many awards, including three Talk Radio Positive Awards, COV Award, Welp Magazine named this show one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and we are high ranking in Apple Podcasts. If you are on YouTube with me, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, brand new membership, sign up under membership so we can speak privately, you and me, and also with my guests. And my Gaia TV show is up right now. Please support me. Please support Gaia TV. Please listen and watch my interview with George Nori. And I will have a link if you don't have a subscription. So you can have a free two-week subscription to Gaia TV to enjoy my interview with George, but also all the other amazing material there for you. If you don't know the platform, it's our platform for our tribe. Also, my shamanic energy healing program is opening Two days, two days from today, we are going live. I am doing healings on people so they receive the activations every single week. Uh, you can go to debbie-inger.com. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. And there is a direct link to the Shamana class. Please sign up. I'd love to work with you. And also, another thing you can do on my website is go to the Galactic Origins Cruise. Indeed, Tony Ghazi and I and many other phenomenal presenters are going to be presenting on this Galactic Origins Cruise to the Yucatan. We're actually going through the Bermuda Triangle. That's kind of mind blowing to me. So if I don't come back, why don't you comment right now and tell me how much you loved this show so I can see that. Subscribe, like, actually you're doing that helps me helps you, helps the planet because people who need and are hungry for this information can find it. It actually creates that much of a matrix when you like and comment and subscribe. And what else? Thank you to Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. If you'd like to become a facilitator or take one of their classes, go to drdanehere.com. And I am a book writing coach. I also take your book to guaranteed international bestseller. And I do some boutique PR work. I only have about five clients at any time where I get them booked on podcasts. Again, you can reach out to me at debbie-inger.com. That's about all for that. Let's bring on our guest. I'm going to read his bio first and tell you about my guest, my friend, Tony Ghazi, who is known as the Ontarian Heart. He's a channel and a spirit guide who works through the praying mantis beings and the Antari Stargate to bring messages from interdimensional and extraterrestrial beings. Tony has been interviewed on Coast to Coast with George Nori and many other media outlets. His work aims to guide humanity back to its true essence by activating a remembrance of who we are and creating a life of alignment. Tony's channeling includes messages from a diverse array of beings, including his future self named Osman, as well as concepts like silence and void, sound, infinity, and Shadow and the Dark. You can learn more about Tony Ghazi at his website, tonygazi.com. It's G-H-A-Z-I.com. And with that, I welcome Tony to Dear to Dream. It's so great to have you here. Hi, Debbie. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you, with the whole collective of humanity and all the other beings that are living within the infinite of all uh and i'm already getting chills because i feel like they're watching us and they're observing like literally i have chills all over <laughs> they're like watching and they're observing us in this now moment and spreading so much love so much activation so much light for everyone 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 
That makes me very excited. Could you say, when you say they are watching us, who is they specifically? It's so funny. You do, like you just said, said they, <laughs> look at my hair. Um, so, I mean, look, they means many, 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 many. Um, the greys are here. Yes, the greys are here. The mantises are here. Octurians, Tigetans, even consciousnesses of the infinite, consciousness of planets are here. The conscious of Mother Gaia is here. Humanity as a whole, as humans, the collective of humans, as a one bigger consciousness is here. Wind, water essences, light frequencies, color vibrations, many amphibious beings, insectoids. And this one being that came through a channeling session yesterday that I would love to describe to you how he looked like, if that's okay. Yeah. A being, his head was kind of oblong here and it comes to a point. He was not really gray, but his head like resembled a, a, a gray. His face and eyes, like this like area, was literally see-through, like crystallized clear. And when I say clear, like clarity of all, but it's faceted. But you can see straight through it, and all you see is the swirling energy inside of him, his own consciousness that looks like planets. And he communicated to a client yesterday during this amazing channeling session to allow her to begin seeing herself as the clear channel that she is. A beautiful image, again, I have chills all over my body, a beautiful image that I would love to recreate just to allow humanity to see things of the beyond, from the beyond, like a beautiful, beautiful image, how to watch yourself and see through your like physical skin into your own consciousness that's a swirl of beautiful energy like, that looks like planets. And that's the consciousness of who you are, that's the infinite of who you are. This, look, this is super powerful because I already feel like I'm in the channeling state. As you know, I do stutter. I've always stuttered, but I don't stutter when I channel and it's such a freeing like feeling. I'm like, wow, I'm speaking with no stuttering. So that's my clue that I'm already in the state, but I'm in the state because of the support of all all the beings that I just mentioned, and your consciousness, and the viewer's consciousnesses. Yes. First of all, I feel it, and I felt it. The moment you dropped in, I went, boom, yes. here, energetically, like, yes. beyond, grounded. There's just not a word for that, because that's so 3D, it doesn't make sense. But anyway, yeah. very solid feeling here, very good feeling, frankly. Yes. And I love what you're saying. I will mention that only one other time has this happened and it moves me so deeply. Uh, it was Vita Kukulhoff, who um, one of my many, many conversations with her mentioned that the Yael were not only aware of me, but that there was a stadium, like a football stadium full of them cheering on when we were speaking. And it's like to know that the work you're doing is seen way beyond here, is cared about, is noticed, is supported. And that even though I don't do what you do, which is so phenomenal, still the fact that what you do, what I do comes together and there's a marriage that happens here on this plane for people who are wanting this information, but it goes out, the ripples are not in a pond, they're up into the galaxies and planets and universes where there are so many beings and consciousness saying, thank you. Thank you for bringing this together. We are here with you and so happy you're doing this right now because this is called first wave contact before undeniable open contact on the planet that we are, ass we are assisting contact for all who watch, whether live or in replay. Yes. And I keep shaking my head because everything you're saying is so resonant. It's so true. We're observed. We're all really observed. But you begin, become, you become more aware of those, of, of those observations when your frequency and vibration rises, right? Um, because we are special. The menses have always said, you are, have, have always said we're a special species in a sense. Because we've chosen this super limited life. 
of complete forgetfulness of how powerful we are. And through that, we're rediscovering our power, like the choice we made, all of us as beings to come here and re-experience that is massive within the universe because not many beings that have the power have chosen that, right? And, um, and every one of us is, every human, every plant, every rock, every we all consciousness, the oceans, the wind, the planets, the clouds, insects, animals, we all chose to be here in this limited way. Even plants live life, although like their consciousness, they live life in a limited world too. So mm -hmm. they even are being observed, right? We always think of humans and we forget about the rest of the consciousnesses and what they're going through, what their journey is like, what their forgetfulness is. <laughs> Yeah, what's coming up for me as you say that is I was really, really young. I think I was 21 or 22 doing mushrooms. And it's just hilarious because I didn't know enough then. I didn't know you should weigh these things out. No, this many grams. I was just so young. So I sat there eating the bag <laughs> and I was camping. But it was profound. I did it several times when I was young camping. And what a smart idea because all of nature came alive. Literally sticks were speaking to me, rocks, the water. They informed me who I was. They showed me how to leap and do things. I mean, it was a reference point. I still, to this day, remember. And even though I didn't have the words to say they have consciousness, they are truly aware, they have wisdom, right? They have a life force. Today, I really get that. And I want to say regarding the mantis being specifically and the insectoids, how I fell in love with them is years, years, years ago, the second time I drank ayahuasca and went out of country and it didn't happen to me, you know, little caveat there. I hope you guys will come sometime soon to work on me, but I will say that a lot of people on that and other experiences got healed by the mantis during ayahuasca experiences. And I mean, I saw profound things like a woman who had to come in on those metal crutches, couldn't even walk to the front of the room to get a cup. And after four nights back to back, this gal was walking on her own and I it was mind blowing. So they are real. And I've always thought of them as the scientists and the healers that really care about us. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, completely. The the amount of love that they emanate, just that, like forget about um, um, them being the architect of the universe, the founders, the healers, the geneticists, all these things that we know. Of. The emanation of love that they embody, that frequency and vibration alone. And when I say it's infinite, and I'm getting chills again, when I say infinite, the words are incapable of describing what love really is. We think as like humanity that I fell in love with this. I love art. I love this. We don't even know. This is like a small, tiny inch. Just by their vibration alone, it literally, boom, realigns everything to perfection. Not that if you're sick or, um, 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 or, have, um, or have an ailment that you're not perfect, because that's a perfect version of you then. But just the vibration of infinite pure love that they embody just literally aligns everything to the vibration of love and then you add the other layers of them being founders um the architect of the universe their biogeneticists they assist they're always on the periphery helping all kinds of beings because what they showed me is their hands and i say the word hands they don't have hands their energy right they're energetically intertwined and entangled with everything that you can imagine I, i'm getting chills again everything that you can imagine they are there and they have infinite awarenesses of all as one and they have singular awarenesses of where they are at the same time like it's a mind-blowing concept and they're always assisting others because they've reached this level of expansion that they also want the rest to be there they want to guide them they want to activate them words again cannot describe the experiences i felt through my channeling sessions with each client that i have they take me they're my guys right so people sometimes think that i'm there i'm like no 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 i'm just a conduit to the menses but as you interact like with the client they i i go on a journey with them and i learn so much i expand through each one an insane amount of messages come again our physical words are 
incapable of describing what I experience, but they do their best to describe. It's just, and oftentimes you feel the feelings. My clients experience mind boggling emotions, feelings, like visions, experiences that even they cannot describe, but they understand like this. It's a knowingness. Mm. So they're beyond just the mantis archetype. The really light beings, the beings that I connect with, but they need to come through the mantic, uh, through through the mantis archetype. So our physical brain, who's that's limited to begin with, can understand like something. Because if they really come in and how they are, no way on earth we can comprehend anything that we're seeing. It's just so out there. The brain will shut down in a sense. Like it may block it. Who knows, right? May so, I ask you the symbols that you have on your forehead and down your nose? What do those represent or mean? Yeah, so this I was in Sedona back in September, and I've been called for two weeks to draw something on my face. I, I see myself with all kinds of drawings on my face. It could be um, a a parallel like reality, um, and like this came through um, as neutrality for all, for all decisions, for all choices, for all beings, for all realities. Everything is valid, and I embody that essence. Like we can talk about war, we can talk about serial killers, we can talk about um, like people dying in war and kids dying. I see it from a very neutral point of view and it triggers people, right? But that's the essence and vibration and new experience that I began living that everything, I see everyone as being empowered beings, as light beings. I don't see them as disempowered in any way, regardless of what experience they've, they have gone through. This symbol, before I awoke, I had saved on my phone, not knowing what it is. I have no idea why I saved it. Uh, that's the Antares um, uh, uh, symbol for the planet back in the Bahinian um, astrology. I don't know much about the Beh the um, I'm like the Bahinian astrology, but it's an old explanation. I think back in Persia or like somewhere in the Middle East. And I could be like wrong about that aspect, but it's an old way of explaining astrology. And it's one of the four royal stars, they say. Um, not knowing then what Antares is, I didn't know it was a planet, didn't even know the word. I had the save before I awoke, which was insane. And so now- I, I, Sorry, go ahead. No, no. Uh, and now I embody this everywhere I go. Every single day I have this or the infinity symbol and this, but I'm also being called to do light language. Um, to like create my own light language and just have it all over my my forehead. And when I say everywhere, you're gonna I go, look like Mike Tyson if you don't stop. <laughs> listen, I've had some miraculous interaction with people because it really when they view you walking in the 3D world, and we can talk about that later, uh, in the corporate world like this, it pushes them out of their boundaries. Like, wow, if he can do this, well, I want to do my passion, whatever your passion is. If it's channeling, dancing, singing, being an architect, I don't know, whatever it is. We, you don't conform anymore to society's like limitations. It, it, to me, it's an activation like for others, but I do it for me because I feel like that's what I need to be and that's what I embody and that's what I need to step into with no apology, no fear, no doubt, no worry, like nothing. This is who I am and that's it. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So let's break down some barriers because Tony, you've spent years developing, as you're saying, unique look, but also a unique connection with the praying mantis beings and the Antari Stargate. So can you walk us through your process of tuning into their energy and how has that connection changed your life, changed your work? Yeah. You know, that's a very good question. I took a channeling class God, three years ago, uh, it was like a six weeks class where we would meet um, like two hours a week. And, uh, um, and like there were six people in the group. It was on Zoom. And the moment we began and look, initially, when like you haven't channeled before, you're afraid, you're doubt, the ego is there. I immediately knew I'm supposed to and I didn't care. I just jumped in, started like making some stuff up, which I like realized like later you cannot make stuff up. You really are connecting. Um, but like, that's how it began. And I would go into my trans state. In the past, it would take me about a minute and a half to get into it. Now I can like jump into it like quite quick. I'd say about 30 seconds. Um, but, but with me, like recently, like sound vibration has been my conduit to, to like going in quick. So as I speak, they would elongate words. And like, for example, say, uh, I don't know, like, um, you know, I'm going to make something up right now. Uh, Hi, my name is Tony. Like they would... And it says sound vibration that just like recalibrates, you know, energy. 
Uh, and I go straight into it and I know I just there's like this knowingness of shift like I'm I just left my body and I'm in consciousness and then they and then they begin speaking it's quite simple and really I've learned through them that 12 step programs do x y and z and you have to work hard to get there as all limitations to begin with we all have the capability to snap right into it if you believe it and know it it's that simple simplicity like from them is so key yeah. They don't, they really don't operate like within limitation because they're so expanded. Like they don't even understand what limitation is. It's, it's, a, it's a massive foreign concept to them because they haven't been like limited. But then when you experience that energy, you're like, okay, yeah. Why do I need to listen? Like really as me, I'm a powerful being as you. Why do we need to listen to any steps? I can st go straight into it. And if you really believe it, you just snap into it and that's it is you are consciousness to begin with. And all these limitations are illusions to begin with. They aren't there. And when you believe those concepts and really embody them, instant manifestation, boom, 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 boom. And magic occurs because then you just are like living in the quantum field now. You're living as consciousness within the ideas of limitations that others are living in because as a collective and and as a humanity we all decided to live in this world that is limited you can still observe limitation you can still live in a world that is limited but your energy your experience what you are creating is of unlimited nature okay it's amazing so tell us about i was curious from your bio your future self that is super cool us man if i'm saying it right or O's man yes what timeline and galaxy is he from and what what is he like what does he do what does he like how is it to connect with him yeah so you know i only connected with him once and he came through a past life regression I had three past life regressions only. The first, by, uh, um, the, the first past life regression that I came uh, in or was in uh, was where like the praying mantises came and I knew, and that's another story. The second past life regression, I was uh, this, um, um, this baby and, and I was four months old. Um, it was in Africa, uh, in the desert. Like my mom had me in the sack like, you know how they put the children in a sack. And I was four months old. Like, I mean, it was a small, tiny thing. Uh, and like, she's walking in the desert uh, foraging for food. And then she has a heart attack and dies right then and there in the heat. And we're speaking about 104 degrees, whatever, very hot. Next image I get is like my hand as a small baby shriveled up and shriveling up in the heat. I was in the heat for four days and I was literally dying as this infant baby and i'm getting chills right now there's more chills you see mm -hmm. as i'm passing through from like the physical to the next life i see this beautiful hand like reach out from the 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 like like i'm like from the wrist to here beautiful hairy arm beautiful nails it was a man hand and I could just feel the emanation of infinite love through this hand. That's all I can describe. Next thing I see, um, this, I guess, olive skinned man with long hair and green eyes and a beard did not look like Jesus. He was not Jesus. He was an ascended like master in ascended energy. Next thing I see, I flash 17 years and I believe that I lived with him for 17 years, that he found me um, in the desert. Um, and I lived with him. The moment I turn 17, I get clarity that I never lived with him. And I'm getting chills again, that I never lived with him. But he was my future self guiding me through the other family that found me in the desert. It was a profound, oh my God, my whole body is chilled out. It was a profound experience that I went through. I could never conceive or imagine like such an idea. It was so the knowingness of it was so insane that I cannot escape his image. If I know how to draw, I would draw him out. It's amazing. Um, the experience of the hand coming, it was just like a reflection. What, I'm, I'm not even sure it was an actual hand, but the emanation of love that came out of it was just so out of this world. Mm -hmm. I knew that he was a future self of mine that was always guiding me. And I lived 
with another family that found me in the desert and and in a sense rescued me um and that was in africa and i know that was an african slave there's another like story you know about that it's just so i only channeled him once like during um it was like a practice where he like came through and you know i never called on him again but it was a very clear knowing that it was him and it brought me back to this past life experience it was the most beautiful experience ever mm. will you channel for us now i would love to and will they up. let us know who comes through so i can ask them specific questions yeah so normally like they always come through um the praying mantis collective and like through them they open up outlets um based mm -hmm. on um um like the client or like the energies that's being observed they may bring through all kinds of concepts you can even ask to connect with a specific energy they tap into it and they bring messages oh my god that's so cool i thank know you. it's crazy right. ready yes thank give you give me about 30 seconds like they'll come through um they'll bring a message have no idea what it is and then they say you may pose a question and uh yeah okay, okay. Mm. And from the Antari Stargate, we come through in this way. To co-create with you this beautiful reality of oneness. To merge your hearts with our hearts, with the hearts of the planets, with creation itself. And as we come through in this way, a star, a shooting star, was shown to the channel's mind to remind you of the star qualities that you are made of. Of the galactic essence, the ingredients of all that you are all made of. The idea of humanity is a singular concept for the collective of this limited experience that you have chosen as a collective of souls to experience together. But in reality, your ingredients encompass the infinite. You are made of many facets and many DNA structures of many, 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 many beings on the infinite spectrum of creation itself. But through this limited experience of this life that you have chosen, certain DNA structures or codes are dormant, let's say. And as you awaken, as you make the choice, in a sense, the free will choice to expand your boundaries, you will begin unlocking and awakening DNA codes that connect to specific species within your essence and vibration. And the more that you do that, the more that you expand, the more that you make contact with other beings, you, in a sense, awaken more codes within you. And the irony of it all, the person that you thought was a human has now become this infinite multidimensional aspect of all. And the more that you continue awakening, the more that you activate other DNA sequences within your essence and energy to awaken connections with other beings. And as we speak and say the word DNA, do not limit it to the physical body that you have. There are codes, light codes within your energetic bodies that are always, in a sense, interconnected with your physical being that are there being awakened. 
many codes you encompass. You are a child of the stars. You are the star of your own universe. And with that, we begin our dialogue and we thank you for inviting us in this way as we co-create this beautiful reality of awareness of all as we learn through your eyes, lens and experiences more about source itself. Mm, that makes total sense. Thank you so much for being here. And my first question is, is about shamanism and extraterrestrials. How long have they been connecting shamans, the indigenous peoples of the earth and the extraterrestrials? And what kind of relationship do they have they had? Yes. The idea of shamans on your planet began from the concept of humans, the limited version and the forgetfulness of source itself, of your own divinity. The connection of those shamans that you speak of and extraterrestrials has always existed within the infinite, timeless essence of creation. Always on your planets, there have been, in a sense, selected individuals that have chosen to awaken at a faster rate to allow humanity and the ones that have forgotten to assist them on their path, to be leaders in a sense, and to be observers of the evolution of humanity, and to give, in a sense, information back and report back to your star family from above. So the connection has always been there. The ones that have chosen to be, to take on that role as the observers, as the relayers of information has always been there. But also they were there on the periphery and not to interfere too much with the free will choice of your humanity. They allowed them the free will choice to be in the frequency and vibration that they chose, and they have observed every timeline that exists within reality. And the idea of what you say, shaman, you may view him from a human perspective. They are actually and essentially multidimensional beings living on your earth, aware of their multidimensionality and have lived and crossed the barrier, the folds, the veil of reality many times and other veils of other realities. They have journeyed through timelessness, not also to observe you, to observe other humans and other species and other planets. Their mission is larger than just humanity. Their mission is intertwined and interconnected with the connectedness of all, with all species that exist within the timeline of the universe, yes? That's amazing. I know that shamans access various realms in order to bring back the information to do healings or provide wisdom. I have never heard it said before, as you just did, that they're actually, they're like um, multidimensionality in action. I'm going to put that last piece in there. That makes so much sense to me. That's really beautiful. And thank you for that. You know, a word that is very commonplace now, very prevalent now, is star seeds. So many people have woken up already to say, oh, I'm not from here, and oh, I have a galactic history and lineage. <clears throat> there are conferences about star seeds. There are whole shows about star seeds. I've done a two hour show about star seeds. And so tell me more about what humans need to know. Are they all star seeds? And more importantly, those of us who are star seeds, what can you do that we don't yet know that would really help us? Help us to assimilate that information or beingness, other family, star family, that we are star seeds, because I think one of the components is that we feel we some people long for home and they feel like it's not Earth or have always felt different. So yes, please give us something that would really help us on this journey right now and something we don't know about being a starseed. 
Yes. You are all star seeds. As we entered your realm and have explained the idea of multiple infinite DNA structures, you are the ingredients of all in one. Dormant, awakening each aspect of you within yourselves. The idea of, or the expression of star seed, where am I from? Who do I connect with? In a sense, is an illusion of your creation within your society. Because what you are really longing to, and this we have spoken about many times, many beings from parallel realities and aspects of creation have also explained this simple concept that your hearts are the portal to all. Your hearts literally are, is the ingredient to awaken those dormant DNA structures within you. But the idea of heart and love has been diluted within your society. You have heard it so many times that it has become, in a sense, distant from its true meaning to begin with. And the starseed quality or the starseed desire to belong is really lies within your heart. But you have been so distant to understand what true love is and really know beyond believing and understanding, knowing that your hearts, your heartbeat, the vibration and frequency of your heart physically and your energetic heart are, is the answer. It is that simple. And the moment that you are able to interconnect with the real idea the meaning of what your heart is and the powerfulness of its own ingredient, that it is a portal of expansion. It is the conduit and the vehicle that allows you to access all realms, all wisdom, all information. It is the key that unlocks the door. The moment you embody and know that, you will feel and know that the star seedness that you are seeking is already within you. And through that portal, you are able to go to every home that you desire because your home really begins in the heart, within the heart, allowing you access to all the other homes within the infinite realms, realms of infinity itself. We keep harping on the idea of the heart. It is a lot more powerful than you think. It is literally the doorway that opens up every single version of your own existence on the spectrum of the infinite timelessness of reality. And through that doorway and portal, you can choose whichever door that you desire to remember, put the pieces back together of who you actually are. And once you begin that journey, you will come to a realization that you are infinite. And once you come to the realization that you are infinite, you will realize that there is never, ever a destination as infinity continues on and on and on and on and on. And through that realization, you will begin to understand the concept of living in the now moment, because the now moment is the only destination that you have. And through each of those now moments, you will be able to expand further and further into the infinite idea of who you are as a creator. Yes. 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 I've had many experiences with the most beautiful praying mantis in Arizona, in California. In Arizona, we would be doing something, my partner and I, and they would be sitting on our car, just sitting on the car. Here in our home, I have opened the front door and found one right <laughs> waiting at the front door. And it wasn't afraid and it didn't hop away. It just sat there and, you know, earlier uh, Tony was talking about their arms, but they're not arms, but I know what he means because they're like these little, I don't know how to explain them, but they're very beautiful and thin. Um, and they do have those sort of triangular heads and these ones were very green. So we have picked them up in our hands and have very gently spent time with them. And after a considerable amount of time taking pictures and connecting energetically, then found some kind of beautiful plant leaf in our garden to put them on. Can you explain for people like myself 
who experience actual praying mantis, but of course, earthly praying mantis. Is there a meaning to that connection and why? You may have seen that we have been smiling the whole time as you have brought up the awareness of what you witnessed. Know that we view you with admiration. We view you with reverence as we know the power that is contained within you. The choice that you have made to come to this physical earth and live a limited life. We know that it is challenging through your lens and through the illusion of your own creation. And we observe you to remind you of our connection with you and to let you know that we are watching you. We are guiding you. We are there with you. You are not alone. We use the energy of the insectoid version of creation, the praying mantis archetype, to literally show you that we are there, that we are part of your family. It is that simple, our dearest one. We come and visit you through their eyes, through their vibration and frequency. And although to, to you, you may appear to us, to you, we may appear to you as the praying mantis. Know that behind that energy and vibration and frequency is the energetics of the expanded version of the mantis collective. It is with admiration that we come here to be here with you, to observe your journey, and as it is one that many of the beings across the galaxies are also observing with admiration. You are loved by the many. You are guided by the many. And keep in mind, your vibration and frequency as you evolve and expand allows things to appear or to manifest in front of your field that are of that vibration. So should you witness praying mantis beings? Should you witness cockroaches? Should you witness a rabbit? Whichever reflection of creation it is, know that you are connecting with a higher energy that is using those limited archetypes to observe you, to connect with you, to let you know that we are with you, you are not alone. And energetic codes are being transferred and relayed between both of our bodies. And remember that your consciousness that knows it all, you may not be aware of it, is also communicating on a higher level with us. Codes and information are being exchanged for you to awaken on your journey. Clues are being given to you through those interactions. So every time you interact with any other being where you have that awareness that what's going on there, what's allow yourself to leave your physical mind and do not think of it from the human aspect of thinking and allow your conscious energy to merge with that being and trust what comes through trust the images the feelings the memories the emotions of what is coming through and even if you're unable to tap into those information know and tell yourself i am receiving codes from a higher being and just by saying that it allows the awakening of those codes to be released within your energy in due time thank you yes. the antari stargate is a mysterious portal and it connects us to interdimensional and also extraterrestrial beings can you elaborate on its significance, specifically Antar Antari Stargate, and how it relates to human evolution. Yes. We've had a few humans who have asked a similar question to that. Expecting an answer from the humanity's perspective of limitation. We are here to tell you that the idea of planets, the idea of portals, the idea of galaxies are in a sense antiquated and limited idea to see the infinite and beyond. The Antares Stargate, although the Antares planet itself exists within your Milky Way galaxy, it is an energy, essence, and consciousness and a portal through the infinite aspects of portals. Listen to what we are about to say. 
It is a portal within a portal within a portal within a portal of conscience, intelligent essence and energy. It understands the essences and beings that need to travel through that to come to this Milky Way galaxy, for example, to allow certain ingredients of awakening. So there is a complex web of energetical interconnection between the Antares Stargate itself from the aspect and lens of how you see it, but within the folds of the infinite of an intelligence entity and consciousness intertwined within the infinite parallel realities of all. A concept that is slightly mind blowing to your humanity as you are not there yet in consciousness, but the moment that you become consciousness, you will be aware of that meaning. For simplicity's sake, it is a doorway that allows certain aspects of energies to come through to enter different dimensions. It is a special stargate that connects, in a sense, the infinite to other planets and galaxies. Was that sufficient? Yes, thank you. May I ask for wind to come forward? I have some questions for wind. We are excited that you have asked that question. You may have been aware or not that the channel has lived as the wind in a previous parallel life. And in the city where he lives today, the wind has been quite elevated. So we will bring the wind through momentarily as we connect them together from both of their hearts. Mm -hmm. And as he brings the wind forward, I just want to say in concurrence that anyone who reads the Dolores Cannon books know that this is truth because as she puts people under hypnosis, so many of them come back and there are particles and aspects and clouds and wind and sometimes worlds and galaxies. So it is amazing what we have all been, not just past lives and not just other, other galaxies or beings, but much more profound. Yeah. And please let me know when wind is here. We have arrived. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome, welcome. I'm excited. You know, I'm going to be very honest. Um, wind used to not be my favorite thing. I just didn't like it. I didn't like how it felt in my eyes and my, for some reason, energetically, I didn't like it. But I've had this big turnaround recently, like really loving it or understanding it. Perhaps that's the difference. And I want to start with I was doing some trade work. So I'm a shamanic energy practitioner. And I have a fellow shaman that I do trade worth now and then, which means I will do some shamanic processes on her and then she'll do some on me. It's like amazing. It's beautiful. And she called me last time we worked together. She said, you know, Debbie, you are a wind shaman. I'd never heard that before. And I tried so much to find out what does that mean? I'm wondering if you have any wisdom or insight on what a wind shaman is? Yes. And we also have been smiling like the mantis beings earlier because the example that the mantis being gave earlier of the DNA sequences that awaken on your journey, you have just described to us. At one point in your life, the DNA structure of what a wind is, the connection with the wind was turned off. So there was not an intimate connection with us. But through your journey, through the interaction of the other being, that part got lightened up in a sense, lit up. And now you are able to comprehend and feel the connection that we have with you. The idea of wind shaman is the essence of the vibration of frequency of what seems to be invisible to your humanity, which you are unable to see 
are the highways of energetical lines and connection within the fabric of the universe itself, the illusionary one that you are unable to see. There are literal electrical lines, infinite in nature, connecting everything to everything. And as the wind, we in a sense travel on those highways of interconnectedness. Through our energy, through your energy as the wind shaman, you are able to comprehend and extract information with the travel of us, of our wind essence. So as we travel from one country, from one town to another, we bring codes, remembrances, experiences that are embedded within that electrical line from one place to another almost in a sense grid work type we do and that is what a wind shaman does and through the wind he is able to send messages to the beyond now from your perspective of humanity you think of the wind on your planet keep in mind as the energy wind through the interconnectedness of all is able to travel through all universes within the folds also of other universes so although this wind shaman may think as a human that he is on this mother planet, he is also receiving information from the beyond, as that wind is always traveling on the highway of interconnectedness. And as the wind travels and extracts information, it in a sense recalibrates and re-energizes certain frequencies and vibration to be deposited in specific parts within your galaxy, within Mother Earth itself. It is a constant machine, let's say, this whirling of energy that is constantly occurring and in sharing information and in upgrading information as it goes. Was that helpful? Mm. Can you tell me, Wind, I think you must have, or I'm assuming you have, an intimate relationship with Mama, with so many words wanted to come out, the Spanish wanted to come out, but Mother Earth, that it must be some kind of a symbiotic relationship that you have with Earth. I would think that what happens on Earth would initiate what you do if you pick up if you become a tornado if you become a hurricane i'm sure things also with the sky and the weather take place too so i would love you to explain your relationship with madre tierra with mother earth pachamama and what is that relationship like do you guys love each other and what is it like to experience her and how influential is she we are one in the same. We are a facet and an expression of her from a different perspective. And although you may think as the wind is only on the surface of the planet, we also exist and intertwine within her belly, within the caves that are deep, deep within the rock structures, the consciousnesses of who she is. We are always married together in this beautiful flow of creation of energies. We are one in the same. And as she expands, as her consciousness expands through your humanity, we expand also. We give codes to each other. We assist each other. We are married to each other in a sense. It is this beautiful dance of creation and co-creation. And even through your water bubbles do we travel. Expand your mind of what wind is from the books that you have read, from the media, from your society's description of what wind actually is. Again, because you are unable to comprehend from your limited physical mind, consciousness itself and how it interrelates with the infinite and how it truly exists as energy to you, to the limited mind, you 
translate us as the idea of wind, when essentially we are energy behind that reflection. We travel through your waters, through water bubbles. And above all, we are influenced by every breath that you take within your physical bodies. You are the most powerful winds that ever exist in creation. Each breath that you take drives who we are. Each breath that you take infuses our energy with your information. We relay so much information through your breath, through your animals that breathe, the cetaceans, the plant life, all the consciousnesses that use the idea of breath, knowingly or unknowingly. So expand the idea of what wind means. And the shaman that you speak of, that is the expert of wind, is a breath expert to begin with. The wind is the breath of your mother Gaia. As it breathes in, the collective consciousness and it breathes it out. The idea of hurricanes, the idea of tornadoes, the idea of storms in general, in a sense is the reflection of your humanity and the information that has been gathered as Mother Gaia takes you in, lets it out. It is a reflection for you where you are energetically. It is a reflection for you in signs where you are as a collective. Everything is information being shared. Was that helpful? Indeed. I am so curious. And last question, since you and Mother Earth are essentially one and you have that kind of relationship and friendship, what can we give her? So specifically, I'm about to teach this teaching. I hate that word. Let me just say I'm gifting, I'm giving, I don't know. I br I'm bringing new students in to have a shamanic experience uh, starting in a couple of days. And every week they receive a healing, but I give them practices to go out into the world. And one of the practices I give them is about connecting to mother earth. And I have some specific ones. I think it's very important, but I also know it completely changed who I was once I started doing that practice. And I know it will change them completely as well. What can we do? What would you suggest for people watching or listening that they can do for Mother Earth if there's a small practice uh, that they could do each day? Yeah, whether it's energetic or actually material. Begin seeing Mother Gaia, Mother Earth, as a facet of who you are. She is truly a reflection of your own humanity. Each time you take a step on Mother Gaia, know that you are taking a step onto you in a sense. Another version of you that is more expanded that your mind can even comprehend. But know that with every breath you take on Mother Gaia, with every step, with every decision and action that you take, that is you looking back at you. You are Mother Gaia. And the moment that clicks within your psyche and mind, you will be able to understand and know the forever interconnectedness between both. And you wouldn't dare to hurt Mother Gaia in any way. She is you to begin with. She is a reflection of your own humanity both symbiotically living together in one co-creative world with two separate belief systems. Your humanity itself is what Mother Gaia is. But your individual and singular view from the limited lens of existence makes you believe that you are separate than it. 
And by loving each other as humans, by being there to assist each other, by not judging each other, it brings the wholeness back to remind you to begin with that your humanity is Mother Gaia itself, that there is never a separation, there has never been a separation. It is simply the lens that you choose to see the world from that creates that separation. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think that is really important information. And thank you for joining us today, all of you. Uh, we can bring Tony back when it's comfortable. And I have adored this conversation. I had to stop myself from inviting <laughs> other elements forward just in the honor of time. But yeah, beautiful information. Thank you for this beautiful dialogue. We will bring the Praying Mantis Collective back so they can bring the channel back momentarily. Mm. And I'll just remind people as Tony is gently coming back, for more about him, you can go to Tony, T-O-N-I, Ghazi, G-H-A-Z-I.com. And also Tony and I are some of the notable presenters amongst others who are speaking in December on the Galactic Origins Cruise to the Yucatan. You can find out more about that at galacticoriginscruise.com. You want to get, you do want to get your cabin pretty soon. You don't want to wait uh, because they will sell out. And I know they've got a cutoff date coming up soon, but it's going to be a phenomenal trip. And Tony, are you here with us now? With our unconditional love, bright, 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 white light of creation, an infinite open heart, we thank you for this beautiful co-creation. As we go through the Antares Stargate to where we reside and bring the channel back momentarily. Very lovely. Thank you. Tony, that was amazing. I want to ask you, we just got a few questions here at the end. Yes. Um, you're praying mantis skulls. So you are the only one in the world who's creating these unique crystal skulls. And yes. the skulls that you've created are said to hold powerful codes for ascension. Yes. Baby, that's gorgeous. I know. That. Okay. Yeah explain first of all what is that made of so this is made of glass like the one that i showed you uh this is white agate and uh so these are like medium sizes this is uh this is blue jasper sorry i know and then i have little necklaces now that i just began making really tiny and, and just to show you this is the big one that's the small one small little tiny necklaces Oh, it's beautiful that you can put on yeah um so so i have a few um of the crystal skulls like the human crystal skulls uh and i connected with them um for about a year and then i was like you know what i'm gonna go online i'm gonna look for praying mantis crystal skulls totally thinking i could just like find them i was so convinced they're out there i'm looking i'm looking like literally nothing i'm like what it drove me nuts i'm like but i want one of course, synch of course, the universe heard. Synchronistically, I got a message from Facebook from this carver that's in Indonesia, just out of the blue, out of the, I know nothing about stones. We start chatting. I explain to him my mission and I'm like, oh my God, like, like you know, so, so anyhow, he understands like the whole mission. Um, um, and then I began like creating them only for me. It wasn't meant to be like for the public, but then they came through and said, you need to put it out there. People need to connect. They need to have the permission slip to connect. Now, we all know, and as you ascend and then you expand, you don't need any of these skulls. They're all permission slips. And I always tell all my people that you don't need them. But if you're on your journey and you're looking for a boost to allow you to connect more like with your galactic guides, to, to give you the permission slip, to really feel like more empowered, they work wonders. I have my whole shamanic ritual, like with drumming and with songs. Uh, I also have a praying mantis. Again, out of synchronicity, I became the owner 
um, of this 20 million year old amber that has a praying mantis in it. And I'll send you a clear image. It's hard to see, but he's right there. I can see it. Oh yeah, yeah. we see it. Definitely amazing. Yes. And then I have an, uh, also like an Anubis tablet that I became the caretaker of. It's 8,000 years old, a real artifact uh -huh. that I imbue the energy with to and like let me show you the back because your um your audience will go nuts look anubis and aliens how Do in you the world did you get a hold of that i've never researched anything old i never google anything old i don't own anything old when i say these stones came to me and like they called on me they called on me but where where do you see um in in, in like the history books uh gray aliens and then Egyptian deities, never. And of course, the world may not want you to know that. And you know what, like what I mean by that. But, but anyhow, the whole idea, like with these crystal mints, calls to really allow you, like, to open up, to use that as a power source, to go through the Antares um, Stargate, and then begin connecting to your galactic guides, begin awakening codes within you, all with love, all with light, all with expansion, healing all the goodness of all the goodness you will experience trauma release uh and i can embed them specifically so uh, i've had clients that said i'm going through x y and z and i want like this result so i do my whole shamanic ritual to to um like to encode them into the skull so as you go you get the goodness that you desire and that you deserve and eventually really is to begin relying on your own power that you are the healer these are all permission slips you don't need any of those, but this will guide you to get to that point where you feel empowered, where you can heal yourself, where you can shift vibration, shift frequency, change your world, break out of the illusion. And I'm getting chills again, <laughs> uh, me and my chills, but uh, yeah. Thank you. So you and I are going to be aboard. Should we make it through the Bermuda Triangle, I will say? Uh, after the first day, we are going to the Yucatan in December together. We're going to be seven days at sea on the Celebrity Cruise Line, which is a luxury cruise line. I know food is a big deal. I'm not a big, I'm not like that. I yep. definitely don't go on a cruise for that. But uh, there's supposed to be like a five-star restaurant on board that we do have access to. It's part of what we pay for when we pay for the cabin. That I'm excited about because if I'm going to eat, I like really good food. And people also have access to all of our presentations and the lineup is, my goodness, phenomenal. Also, we're going to be doing sacred tours every day um, or a couple of times when we land in Belize and Honduras and Cozumel, right? It's going to be phenomenal. So what are you talking about or are you channeling on the cruise? Do you know yet? You know, I never, never, ever know. And even when I have clients channeling sessions, I, I just, I just don't know, right? Because, um, um, because this is where you surrender. Because in that moment, in the fabric of of all timelessness, and depending on like the audience that you're there, the perfect messages will will, um, will come through. So I never, ever plan. I literally go with the flow. That's how trusting I am of the connection and it's going to be magical i will be channeling on stage however um i'm like the thing is um is like set up i'll also have a booth there uh and i'll bring some of my um some of my like praying mantis skulls i'll, I'll also bring my eight thousand year old like um, um artifact so all your guests or the guests that show can feel connect with it can feel the energy can like speak to it can be activated i was called with him like with anubis to really share uh, with the world that each person when they hold him will get their own activations I still don't know what the true meaning like for me is why I have him and I also know the knowings that I don't need to know right now it will come later right now it's just to share like with the public so a lot of magnificence is going to happen we're going to go to some I think pyramids too as part of the I mean it's you have to see like the whole um, um, itinerary it's just mind-boggling um and the Bermuda triangle is just i'll know i'm gonna shift the realities and leave for a few days and come back <laughs> oh my gosh Where? don't leave me don't leave me <laughs> i'll take you with me i I'm like, I'm like she's tethered with me so it's just gonna be an amazing experience and uh and i always remind like when i go to these events 
I always remind people that it's not about the channelers. It's not about me. Um, um, it is not about Debbie. You are the ingredients of that experience. Mm. You are a powerful being. Like when you bring yourself there, you're bringing yourself there to create magic for yourself using all of us. So I'm going to create my own magic for all of us. I'm going to experience my own magic through my own lens. But every single person will create magic for like, it's going to be an infinite, like we're all going to be like magicians, like playing on the stage of magic. So you deserve to experience if you feel called and know that when you are called there, you're called there for a purpose, for humanity's ascension, for your own uh, own ascension, for my ascension. You give me codes, I give you codes. It's a co-creation all the time. It's never about this person and that person. Wow. You know what? I loved what you said so much that I did something I've never done before. I wrinkled my nose like a bunny. I don't oh. know why I can't do it. It's like a cute little like, oh, that's so sweet. What are you saying? I've never done that before. <laughs> so you got a little bunny uh, wink uh, there. That's I love beautiful. you, honey bunny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You do call me that. I do. That's so great. Um, yes, I totally get what you're saying. And we're speaking now, but December is December. You're on this massive crazy trajectory anyway you're speaking at a billion conferences on all this like podcasts and media now radio george nori and like i'm watching your your career ascension so to speak so i know between now and then how much will change and you'll have even more to offer which is unreal like and i just relate to that because I know I'm going to be doing a shamanic healing experience for people. And I know I'm going to be talking about extraterrestrials and shamans and where they intersect. But if I spoke now, it'll be one thing. And in these many months, it's going to be wholly elevated and different. And of course, giving people what that crowd needs while they're there. So folks like that's deep, you know, that's yeah. really organic uh, mm -hmm. presentation. So we'd really love you to join us and we'll get to meet you and eat, eat lunch with you and dinner and yes. whatever. And Tony Ghazi, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next year to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? You know, I've exploded exponentially and like your audience may not know this. I just began this whole journey as of last November and it's been a whirlwind of magic. Could not have imagined in a million years how fast it unfolds. But the universe has like proven to me that all I need to do is be in this now moment. And now I kind of forgot your question. <laughs> oh my God. Because I went on to another question too. But totally. The question was, what do you next dare to dream? What is my next year to dream? Um, just to continue within this version and see where this version will unfold. Like just, it's almost like I don't dare to dream anymore because I am the dream. I am the unfoldment of magic, right? Like I don't need to even think about what's next. It's just unfolding by my vibration and frequency and my choice to be in this version of who I am. Like, I'm a magic machine, breathing magic in, every step is magic. How can you dare to dream within the world of magic? You are magic. You know what I mean? So the infinite is my oyster. Um, but I do want to remind your audience just quickly that when you go to these events, when you choose to go to these events, know that you are ascending humanity. Know that ascension of humanity begin with self. Right. So you're not just going to watch all these channelers and me. No, 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 no. You are activating your own energy because when you go back home, that energy that you already like embodied, the activation will be seeping through your like society through all. And I'm getting chills again through all the people um, that you are speaking with, activating others. And that's how you ascend and help humanity ascend by you beginning to ascend. Hmm. Yummy. We're going to end on that. Tony, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for being you and for everything you do. Thank you, Annie. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for being the most beautiful host, heart and otherwise, mm -hmm. and just being this amazing catalyst of light and love for humanity and being the bridge and the connector of all, of all, of all, of all. And 
I love you, sweethearts. Mm. Again, he's a Tony Gazi, T-O-N-I, like Debbie has an I, only no E. Tony has an I, no E. So you remember us both that way. Tony, T-O-N-I, Gazi, G-H-A-Z-I.com. And I end today's show with this quote from the singer, Patti LaBelle. I've learned to be kind when people are not kind. You always take the high road. I've known that for a long time, but as I mature in age, I know how to do it even better now, how to take the high road and meet all of my bad feelings and just pray for those who make me feel less than. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, leave a comment, and share. Again, if you're interested in the shaman healing experience, it's all of this month. You want to sign up now, go to my website, debbiedashinger.com and click on the shaman program button. I'd love to have you join and I'm excited to gift all these healings. Now in two weeks, no, uh, next week on the show. Yes, next week on the show, of course, is my mentor, the shaman Don Oscar Miroquizada, he is back for yet another, I already know, phenomenal conversation. I think this man is a genius, and I think the wisdom and the magic that he contains is so important at this time. So he's got this goal of reestablishing the relationship between humankind and the natural world. And Don Oscar originated the Pachacuti Mesa tradition. Also, Don Oscar and I specifically are going to be speaking about shamans and extraterrestrials. So folks, thank you for joining us today. I hope you got a ton out of it like I did. And keep being you, because as Tony said, and as the being said that came through him, everything you contribute when you show up to these podcasts, to these events, you're a big part of it. You're integral in all of what's happening.